So we've met the Master of Masters in Kingdom Hearts Key and have seen him in a couple of the Kingdom Hearts games since, but who exactly is he and why is he here? Let's get right into it. Welcome back everyone, this is your girl Empowered Muse and today we're going to talk about what all we need to know about the Master of Masters so far. He's been such a mysterious character in the story and since it's confirmed that he'll be in at least two of the upcoming games or updates, it may be important to recap everything we need to know about him. Now before we go on, make sure you like this video and subscribe to this channel. And if you know anyone who may have questions about what to expect for the upcoming Kingdom Hearts games, be sure to send them this video. So once upon a time during the Age of Fairy Tales, when the Master of Masters was a boy, the very first Keyblade War began. This continued for an unknown period of time in which the Master saw many of his loved ones perish from darkness, overtaking their hearts. After seeing the world, his world, destroyed repeatedly, the Master crosses into a new world line, settling in Daybreak Town and composing the Book of Prophecies from events foreseen by his gazing eye. We first meet the Master of Masters in Kingdom Hearts Key, or the Kingdom Hearts Key back cover movie, where the Master meets with and bequeaths certain roles for his apprentices. For Lu Xu, the Master bequeathed the Keyblade No Name to Lu Xu providing him his role to continue on into the future with no name, passing it down through a chain of apprentices in order to relay future events back to the master through the gazing eye. Though he do so without a copy of the Book of Prophecies in order to avoid temporal paradoxes. Additionally, Lu Xu would be taking the black box. Though he is explicitly barred from opening it, the master does indulge Lu Xu's curiosity and tells him what lies within. But we as the audience are kept from knowing. But we'll get back to the Master and Master and Lu Xu's conversation in a minute. After Lu Xu leaves to fulfill his role, the Master assigns the rest of the foretellers with their own individual roles. Envy was tasked to observe her fellow foretellers and act as a mediator. Asit was to become Ira's right hand man when Ira takes over as leader. Gula was assigned to discern the identity of the traitor mentioned in the lost page of the Book of Prophecies and stop them, and Ava was instructed to avoid the imminent battles in favor of gathering exceptional Keyblade wielders, regardless of their unions, to be part of a separate faction called the Dandelions, who had ventured to another world to ensure the survival of light. The Master also provided Ava with a list of five Keyblade wielders she must gather to succeed the Foreteller's following the Keyblade War, with only one of them meant to receive a copy of the Book of Prophecies, which we saw in Kingdom Hearts Union Crossing, the five chosen Keyblade wielders, Ephemer, Skull, Brain, Lorium, and Ventus, who we know replaced Relixia after she was murdered, and Ava's decision to forego the Master's intentions and bequeath the Book of Prophecies to Brain instead of Ephemer. Then, without warning, the Master disappeared from the world to wait for his plan to unfold. Ava and Gula actively sought him out, but were unable to locate him. But before the Master disappeared, we got to see a larger part of his conversation with both Lu Xu and the Darkness in Kingdom Hearts Union Crossing. So, before the Master bequeaths the no-name Keyblade with his gazing eye in the black box, he takes Lu Xu aside where he reveals the truth of the Keyblade War and the existence of Darkness as an entity to his apprentice. He informs Lu Xu that he plots to have Ava gather wielders with a particular aversion to darkness, travel to the world outside where they gather light from the scattered worlds to rebuild the one destroyed by the Keyblade War. A concerned Lu Xu asked about these wielders, with the Master admitting that not all of them would be able to return to the real world. The Master explains that there is a way to defeat darkness, however it is complex and will take several lifetimes to realize. Intrigued, Lu Xu asked if the Master had ever spoken in darkness, and the Master admits that he had, though neither of them got through to the other due to their unconventional views. Additionally, the Master revealed that darkness is constantly observing them, but wouldn't approach them needlessly. As Lu Xu is still worried for the Dandelions, the Master allowed him to watch over the Dandelions so long as he didn't interfere. After the Master gives Lu Xu instructions with the no-name Keyblade and the Black Box, he explains that when the lifeboat departs, the world will end and those left behind will sink into slumber. The master stated that darkness has cast away its form in order to attack people's hearts, 
but in doing so, its will begins to fade. In coming clean, the Master admitted that there are 13 darknesses and that they would be destroyed once they attain physical form. This is why he had raised his apprentices so that their hearts would be strong enough to lock away the seven strongest iterations of darkness, while five of the remaining six would be locked within the Union leaders, leaving the last to be caged within Data Daybreak Town. Lucius is unable to accept their roles as sacrifices and follows his own path, ultimately becoming the traitor referenced earlier on. In another scene, Darkness asks the Master about his intentions for Daybreak Town and reveals that his plans will result in the town's ultimate destruction. The Master further explained that the Book of Prophecies only depicted selected events and he intends to use it as his waypoint, while the gazing eye in Lucius' memories acted as his medium, giving him direct access to any destination in time. Furthermore, he intended to travel through time with seven lights on the lifeboat. In an attempt to get through to darkness, the Master reveals that he's seen a world which he cannot conceive, hoping to expand the world by rewriting the Book of Prophecies. When Darkness wonders which world the Master would disappear to, the Master tees that it is a world where neither light nor darkness can be controlled, a world we may now recognize as Quadratum, since in the Kingdom Hearts universe it's considered a world of unreality. And the next time we see the Master of Masters, he's made contact with the young Xehanort, gifting him a black coat and has him tour the different worlds to broaden his horizons. Meeting in the Keyblade Graveyard, the Master is surprised by Xehanort's revelation to side with darkness to prevent the world from falling into chaos. Xehanort asks for the Master's name as he attempts to leave, and when the Master gives it, with us as the audience still not knowing, Xehanort reacts with shock, realizing that he is a lost Master. Departing, the Master recited, May your heart be your guiding key. So there's a lot to be said about the Master of Master's strategy and decisions, and it feels pretty difficult to actually figure out his intentions. He, be he behaves in an unpredictable and eccentric manner and comes off as mischievous and playful. His actions with the Foretellers and Xehanort and how he planned to use them to ultimately defeat the Darkness showed just how complicated his planning really was. What we can say though is that according to Lushu, the Master has an absolute hatred of Darkness, having formed all of his plans and actions around cultivating those that could trap and eventually defeat the Darkness once and for all. He also claimed to be afraid of facing the darkness without his black coat, indicating that his long battle against his enemy and seeing so many loved ones and comrades perish due to darkness instilled within him a considerable amount of fear to confront it without some form of protection. So we may never get to see his face. According to the Master and Lucius' conversations, the Master mentions that the war that they are involved in is so grave that they cannot let emotions interfere with the greater good of destroying the 13 darknesses and ensuring that people in the world in general can survive. But so far that's all we know about the Master of Masters and it still feels like we don't quite fully know what the Master has up his sleeve. But what do you think is the Master's ultimate plan to defeat the darkness now that Lushu betrayed him? And when do you think the Master of Masters' true identity will be revealed? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.